Hello and welcome to SD Case and Courses. Today's topic is All Saints Day, and this is lesson number two. So make sure to go to check out the introduction to All Saints Day, which talks about all the basics. But we're going to start with the sign of the cross, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So in the first uh, lesson on All Saints Day, we just talked about the basics. All Saints Day, also known as All Hallows Day, the Feast of All Saints, the Feast of All Hallows, or the Solemnity of All Saints, is a Christian solemnity celebrated in honor of all the saints of the church, whether they are an unknown known or unknown. And a solemnity is the highest rank of feast in the Catholic Church. And a saint is, of course, someone who is recognized as having holiness and closeness to God when they died, which means they would currently be experiencing the beatific vision in heaven. Now we're going to talk about more about the specifics of All Saints Day in Western Christianity. The holiday of All Saints falls on the 1st of November and is followed by All Souls Day on the 2nd of November. And as we learned in the last lesson, All Souls Day commemorates all the faithfully departed. So anyone who is a saint, but uh, might not necessarily who is a saint, but somebody who has died in the love of Christ, but is not quite in heaven yet. So we're talking about those people who are in purgatory, who need prayers to you know be able to experience their final beatific vision in heaven. All right, so that is what All Souls Day about. All Saints Day is about those who have the beatific vision already. That's the difference. All right, it is a solemnity in the Roman Rite of the Catholic Church, and it is a festival in the Lutheran churches and a principal feast in the Anglican Church. So many different churches celebrate All Saints Day. All right, moving on. Now let's talk about the history. From the 4th century, there existed in certain places and at sporadic intervals a feast day to commemorate all Christian martyrs. It was held on the 13th of May in Edessa, the Sunday after Pentecost in Antioch, and the Friday after Easter by the Syrians. And a martyr is just someone, and we're going to do a quick look up. So we can explain a martyr. A martyr is someone who suffers persecution and death for advocating, renouncing, or refusing to renounce a religious belief. In this instance, we are talk talking about those who refuse to renounce a belief in Jesus Christ. So, so Christians had been celebrating martyrs since the late 4th century. All right, during the 5th century, St. Maximus of Turin, who was a Roman Christian prelate known as the first Bishop of Turin, he preached annually on the Sunday after Pentecost in honor of all the martyrs in what is today northern Italy. The Combs of, of Würzburg, the earliest existing ecclesiastical reading list dating to the late 6th or early 7th century in what is today Germany, lists the Sunday after Pentecost as Dominica in Natale Sanctorum, or the Sunday of the Nativity of the Saints. By this time, the commemoration had expanded to include all saints, martyred or not. So basically, we had in the 5th century, we had uh, St. Maximus of Turin celebrating All Saints Day, the day after Pentecost, and we had Germany celebrating All Saints Day, the Sunday after Pentecost. So moving on in the year 609 and 610, Pope Boniface V, who was the Pope from 608 till his death, he consecrated the Pantheon at Rome, which was a, uh, let's see if we can get the box here. Yeah, it was a former, former Roman temple and it had been turned into a Catholic church in this year. So this Pope, Pope Boniface, consecrated the Pantheon to the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the martyrs. And he ordered an anniversary of this feast, uh, which has been celebrated at Rome ever since. So it is suggested that the 13th of May was chosen by the Pope and earlier Christians in Edessa because it was the day of the Roman pagan festival Lemuria, in which malevolent and restless spirits of the dead were propitiated. Some 
liturgiologists, liturgiologists base the idea that Lemuria was the origin of all saints on their identical dates and their similar theme of all the dead. Now, this is just speculation, but we do have a practice in the early church of baptizing and sanctifying um, ideas that were pagan and changing them into something good. So this is very possible, but we do not have a definite proof of it. Moving on, in the, around the year 730, Pope Gregory III dedicated an oratory in Old St. Peter's Basilica to the relics of the Holy Apostles and of all the saints, martyrs, and confessors of all the just made perfect who are at rest throughout the world. Some sources say Gregory III dedicated the oratory on the 1st of November, and this is why it became All Saints Day. Of course, we don't know for sure, but some people have done research on this, such as the Oxford Dictionary. Other sources say Gregory III held a senate to condemn iconoclasm on the 1st of November. And iconoclasm, let's see if we can get it in the screen, is the belief in the importance of the destruction of icons and other images because it would be considered idolatry. And iconoclasm is a heresy. It is not correct, but it was very popular in the 700s, 800s, and we'll probably have a class on iconoclasm, but we're not going to go into that too much right now. All right. So Gregory III dedicated the All Saints Oratory on Palm Sunday, the 12th of April in 732. All right, moving on. By 800, there is evidence that churches in Ireland, Northumbria, England, and Scotland and Germany were holding a feast commemorating All Saints on the 1st of November. Some manuscripts of the Irish Martyrology and Martyrdom of Oingus, which date to this time, have a commemoration of All Saints of the World on the 1st of November. In the late 790s, Alcuin of Northumbria recommended holding the feast on the 1st of November to his friend Arno of Salzburg in Bavaria. Alcuin then used his influence with Charlemagne to introduce the Ir Irish Northumbrian Feast of All Saints to the Frankish Kingdom. And of course, this is the kingdom which we would now know as France, but it wasn't always, as you can see from this map, it wasn't always the size of France that we know of today. But we're going to move on. The... First November All Saints Day was made a day of obligation throughout the Holy Roman Empire in 835 by a decree of Emperor Louis the Pious, who was also called the Fair and the Debonair. He was the king of the Franks and co-emperor with his father Charlemagne from 813. So he made it a decree that it would be a day of obligation uh, November 1st. And Pope Gregory IV agreed with him and allowed him to do this. So that made All Saints Day November 1st. Descartes of Cremona, a scholar who lived in the 12th and 13th century, proposed that Gregory the uh, seventh suppress the feast of May 13th in favor of November 1st. By the 12th century, 13 May had been deleted from the liturgical books. So no one is celebrating May 13th anymore in the West, and they are now all doing it on November 1st. The All Saints octave was added by Pope Sixtus IV. Both the All Saints vigil and the octave were suppressed by the liturgical forms of Pius XII in 1955. So they had added an octave, which would be... Um, seven or eight days of celebration, seven days after, which give you eight total. And then that was suppressed. And now we just have All Saints Day and All Souls Day, but only All Saints Day is a holy day of obligation. So that is a little bit of the history of All Saints Day in Western Christianity. Basically, it started out as a day to, you know, celebrate martyrs in the 4th century, and it was being held on the 13th of May for hundreds of years until about the year 700 when Pope Gregory III uh, had started having it celebrated on the 1st of November. And finally, we have the Emperor Louis the Pious around 835 declaring November 1st all Saints Day for the Holy Roman Empire. And that is the Western 
history of All Saints Day. And in our next lesson, we're going to be going into uh, the Eastern Christian history of All Saints Day. So check us out for the next lesson. And if you haven't already, remember to check out the previous one on the basic introduction to All Saints Day and the previous lesson before that, which is a basic introduction of All holy days of obligation in general. Thanks for learning with us. And until next time, may God bless you forever and ever.